Welcome mathematicians to today's video on reducing balance loans. This will be featuring the TI Inspire Finance Solver from the TI Inspire calculator. So here's our calculator. Let's first of all remember how we get to the Finance Solver. Before we look at our examples in today's video, let's first of all remind ourselves where we go to find the Finance Solver for the TI Inspire CAS calculator. We hit the menu button. Finance is our option eight on the menu and Finance Solver is option one and it loads up, it's preloaded with information for a previous question. This financial solver can be used for any compounding interest problem. Example number one, Rob takes out a loan of $80,000 to buy a new caravan. The terms of his loan are as follows. We have an interest rate of 6.5% per annum, compounded monthly, and payments of $1,500 were made monthly. Our first question, how long will it take Rob to pay off his caravan loan? So I want us to consider a timeline from the start to the beginning and all that happens in between. Here's our screen of our finance solver. So at the start, we have a principal value or present value of $80,000. So we put that in next to our PV on the finance solver. Now, of course, when you receive money such as the, a loan from the bank, that comes in as a positive. So it's a positive $80,000. Now at the end, we want to have a future value of zero. We want this loan to be paid off. So FV becomes a zero. And we want to know N, how many terms will this take? How many months will it take before we actually get there? Now on the finance solver, your unknown is left blank, so we enter nothing in. The rest of this information is consistent for the whole duration of the loan. So there's an interest rate of 6.5% per annum. Finance solver is always expecting our interest rate in percent per annum. The payment goes in as 1500. Now it's a negative because when you pay money, the cash flow is negative, it's leaving you. So it goes into the finance solver as a negative 1500. Now the payments per year, payments are monthly, so we have 12 payments per year. The compounding periods per year, it's compounded monthly, so there's 12 of them per year. And in most of these calculations, we simply hit payment at end. So now we press enter on our calculator. And it tells us the number of months required to pay off Rob's 80,000 caravan loan will be 63.11 months. So that means it'll be paid off in the 64th month or in terms of years, that's 5.26 years, sometime in the sixth year, this will be paid off. In question number two, what would be the balance of his loan after four years? Everything else remains the same. We just wanna know now what happens after four years. So we have our reduced timeline, we're starting with a principal of $80,000. Again, it's positive because it's money received from the bank, money coming to us. Our future value, we don't know what it's gonna be after four years, that's our unknown, okay? And our unknown is left blank on the CAS calculator. And we know it's for four years. Now, because it's compounding monthly and payments are monthly, we have to put our N in number of months. So four years, each year's 12 months gives me 48 months. The interest rate for the duration of this Four year period is 6.5% per annum. The payment is still $1,500 and it's negative because we're paying that money. Rob's paying that to the bank, so negative 1,500. The payments per year, it's monthly, that goes in as 12. It's compounded monthly, so that goes in as 12 times a year as well. And of course, payment at the end is end. Our future value after four years will be 21,706 and 75 cents. Of course, when we find an answer, we have to round it to the nearest cent. Question three, after four years, Rob decides he wants to pay off his loan in just one more year, meaning in the fifth year. What must he increase his monthly payments to in order to finish it in one more year? So here's where we, we finished up at the end of four. We had here a future value of $21,706.75. That's part A, let's break this into two parts. We now wanna consider part B, that extra one year. Okay, now interestingly enough, the final value for the end of part A becomes the initial value for the start of part B. So at the end of four years, the value of the, of the loan still owing was $21,706.75. And that's now the principal value for this final 12 months. So the future value will be zero. We're gonna pay this off in total. Now this is one year. However, this is being measured in months, so it goes in as 12 months. Interest rate was still 6.5% per annum. The payment, the monthly payments, is our question mark. So that goes in as a blank. Payments per year is 12, because it says payments monthly. 
compounding periods per year, compounded monthly is 12. And our payments are going to be made at the end. So finally, the payment that Rob would have to make to finish off this loan in one more year would be $1,873.21, rounded to the nearest cent. Example two, Jessica takes out a loan of $500,000 to buy a house. The terms of a loan are as follows, an interest rate of 4.2% per annum compounded monthly and payments of $2,450 were made monthly. Question one, how long will it take to Jessica to pay off her home loan? Here's our timeline from a start to finish. Here's our finance solver empty. We start off with a principal value or a present value of $500,000. PV equals $500,000. Now, again, you've received money from the bank in a loan, so it goes in as a positive. The finishing value or the final value would be zero. It's fully paid off. And we're not sure what the terms, how many months will be, N equals question mark. So the common information for this whole duration of loan from start to finish is an interest rate of 4.2% per annum. Payments of $2,450. And that goes in as a negative because we're paying money. It's a cash flow away from us to the bank. The payments per year will be monthly, so that's 12. Compounding periods per year is monthly, so that's 12 as well. Payment made at end. The number of months for this loan to be paid off in full will be 358.56, rounded to two decimal places. So it'll take to the 359th month to pay off, or approximately the 30th year. Question two. What will be the balance of a loan after 20 years? So let's now look at just the 20 year duration. So we start at a PV of 500,000. And again, that's positive because it's money coming from the bank. Our future value we don't know after 20 years. So 20 lots of 12 because everything's measured in months. The PPY is in months and the CPY is in months. So the number of turns must be in months as well. 20 lots of 12 is 240. That's entered in for our N. The interest rate is 4.2% compounded annually. The payments were minus 2450, and that again is because we're paying money to the bank. Jessica is putting money from her to the bank, so it goes in as a negative, negative cash flow. Payments per year is monthly, so that's 12. Our compounding periods per year is compounded monthly, so that's 12 as well. The payment, of course, is at the end. So the future value of this loan will still be $237,405.53, and that's to the nearest cent. A final question. After 20 years, the bank reduces the interest rate to 3.4%. How many months will this reduce her loan by? So we're now looking at two parts. A part A that we just established, the end result at part A, was that there's still a debt or a loan amount of $237,405.53. And part B, where this is now the starting principal value. So the part A final value or future value will be equal to the part B principal or present value. The end of the blue region of part A is the beginning of the green region for part B. So PV goes in. Our final value will be zero. Our future value will be zero because we're paying this off in total. How many months does this take? Well, it's going to be in months. We leave that blank. That's our end. We don't know. We're trying to solve in. Unknown is always left blank. Our interest rate is now 3.4. Don't get confused. It's not our initial terms. It's our new term of 3.4% per annum compounded monthly. Our payment goes in as $2,450 with a negative. And our payment per year was 12 because it's monthly. Compounding periods per year is 12 because it's monthly. Payment at end. Now we want to work out our N. This tells us that it'll take a further 113.44 months for Part B to be paid off in total. So original terms were 358 from the very, very first question, 0.56 months to pay the loan off in full. Our new terms with this change after 20 years will require, well, it'll be 12 lots of 20 for the first part, which is 240 months. And then for this final term, it will take another 113.44 months. So in total, under these new terms, this would take 353.44 months. So the difference between our original terms and our new term tells us this new arrangement after 20 years changing the interest rate from 4.2% per annum to 3.4% per annum will save us in total 5.12 months. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's explained some of the um, nuances of the finance solver and also some understanding of a reducing balance loan and how you can change conditions within the middle of the loan period, whether that be in terms of interest rates, whether that be in terms of payments, whether that be in terms of lump sums. There's many ways the questions can be changed up. If you found something worthwhile in this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.